This portion of the 9 to 5 All Our Reviews is brought to you by the Grateful Homeless Outcasts and Unwanted Layaway Society. We believe in helping ourselves. You can reach us at www.ghouls.com or simply www.ghouls.com. We are what our initials stand for. <laughs> The Vault of Horror. Tales from the Crypt. Greetings, ghouls. Yes, it's me, the Crypt Keeper, again. Now that the Vault Keeper has finished his nursery tale, I'll entertain you with a horror story. <laughs> this one is another from my vast collection of terror tales that I joyously guard here in the Crypt. It's a yarn specifically designed to curdle your blood and make the hair on your neck bristle and crawl. <laughs> I call it the Reluctant Vampire. As the last rays of the setting sun retreat before the advancing army of night, my story begins. Down in the dismal, stale-smelling blackness of a cellar lies a rotting, cobweb coffin. Suddenly, its rusted hinges scream in protest as the lid raises. A hollow-cheeked, white-skinned man sits up. It, it is time to go. I'll be late if I don't hurry. The goth man climbs from the coffin, turns and closes the lid carefully. Be safe from prying eyes, dear home, until the morning when I will return. Brushing off the bits of soil that clings to his shabby clothes, the weird figure climbs the rickety stairs that lead from his subterranean refuge. If I'm late again, I'll lose my job. Then... Oh, back to killing. Out of the abandoned ruins of a once proud law building, he moves down narrow, twisting streets, now deserted by the factory workers that throng them during the day. And that would be a shame, which way was so much easier. On into the heart of the city, at a doorway to an imposing building. The strange figure stops, smiles at the sign posted there, then enters. Central City Blood Donor Center. Give a pint today, save a life tomorrow. Open every night till 9 p.m. Ah, oh, two minutes to nine. I'm early. He is greeted by an anxious, overweight man. Ah, oh, Mr. Drake, thank heavens you're early. I have an appointment uptown. Good evening. Evening, Mr. Cross. Mr. Jink watches as Mr. Cross stamps from the blood donor center, locks the door. Then he picks up the ring of keys, the clock, and the badge cap. What a cinch. Night watchman in a blood bank. Mr. Jake unlocks the door, marked blood bank, refrigerated, keep out, and goes in. On the shelves are rows of bottles filled with blood. Ah, oh, the perfect job for a vampire. <laughs> yes, kitties, it's just as you suspected. Mr. Drink is a vampire, a lazy vampire. Until the idea of getting a job in a blood bank occurred to Mr. Drink, he had to go about getting his blood in the usual way, by killing people. <laughs> but this, this way is much easier and so much less distasteful. <laughs> After Mr. Drink has satisfied his appetite. Now to change the records of the day's donations. Mr. Drink unlocks the door to the office where the records are kept and... The record books! They're not here! Fear crutches at Mr. Drink's vampire heart. What'll I do? They'll find out that the blood is missing if I don't change the records. They'll accuse me and I'll be exposed. Mr. Drink rushes from the blood donor center, carries a small black bag. I've got to replace the blood I've taken. On a dark deserted street, Mr. Drink waits in the shadows of a doorway. Someone is coming. The night is filled with the screams of a dying man Honey. as the blood is drained from his... The next night, Mr. Drink comes to his job at the Blood Donor Center. There is an unusual meeting taking place. What's going on, Sally? It's past closing time. Mr. Cross has called a meeting of the staff, Mr. Drink. He has an announcement. Mr. Cross clears his throat <coughs> and a hush falls over the gathering. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have called this meeting to announce that unless the center takes in twice the amount of blood it has been taking in, the home office is going to close up. Our equipment will be sent to another center where it will be put to better use. But Mr. Cross, blood plasma is needed badly. Right, but the amount taken in at this center does not justify the expense of keeping it open. That is the purpose of this meeting, to discuss ways and means of increasing donations so we can remain open. Mr. Drink listens intently. Mr. Drink is frightened. If they close the center, he'll be out of a job. And I'll have to go back to doing what I did last night. Killing. <gasps> and then Mr. Drink has a desperate plan. A plan to keep that center operating. Why not? It will only be for a while until the home office cools off. So, that night, Mr. Drink goes out again with the little black bag. I'll just take a little for myself. <laughs> the rest I'll put in the blood bank and change the records. I mustn't let them close down. And so again, Mr. Drink waits in a deserted section of the city for a victim. Uh, here comes someone now. And once more, the night is pierced by the scream <laughs> of a dying <laughs> Then Mr. Drink returning to the blood donor center. And there. There are eight more pints that they didn't count on. Then he changes the records. Let's see, seven pints plus eight is fifteen. Hmm, that's more than devil. The next day, while Mr. Drink sleeps soundly in his coffin. Mr. Cross, I... Come in, Sally. I've just been reading the papers. Isn't it horrible? What, Mr. Cross? Why, the murders. Two in a row. The blood was drained from the victims. Bodies. They say it's a work of. Sally, you look sick. That night, Mr. Drink searches the city for another victim. Oh, how I hate this. But it's got to be this way for a while. If I don't want to do this all the time. And again, the blood bank has several extra donations. Eight points today, plus my nine makes 17. We're improving. The police are baffled. Fifth murder in a week, and every one of the victims drained of their blood. I tell you, there's a vampire loose. The home office is a maze. Hmm. Actually doubled their previous records. The directors there deserve a medal. I'll contact the army. The army is pleased. For his patriotic work in increasing his center's blood in by 100%, the army authorizes that Mr. Christopher Cross be awarded. And so... Look, Sally. They sent it to me. A medal for patriotic and unselfish effort. Mr. Cross, there's been another murder, and... Well, child, what is it? Speak up! Two nights ago, before I went home, I checked the day's donations. There were five pints. The next morning when I checked again, there were 14. <laughs> you mean... The vampire that has been killing those poor people and draining their blood brings it here. But Mr. Drink, the Night Watchman would have... Mr. Drink is the vampire! This morning I followed him home! He, he, he lives in a coffin! Come! We must tell the police! Yes, they will know what to do! Mr. Cross and Sally rush to the police and Sally tells her story. And in the basement of the abandoned law building has a coffin! Mr. Drink climbed in. Then he is a vampire. Let's go get him. Wait. We can't bring him in here. We've got to destroy him where he lives. Sally leads the detectives to the resting place of Mr. Drink. He's in there. Open the lid, Ed. I'm ready. Wait. The, this medal belongs to him. He doubled the blood donor's center records. Not I. 
the meadow is rightfully his. Well, lay it on his chest, Mr. Cross. I'll pin it on him with this strike. The crack crack of rock on wood echoes through the littered cellar as the detective drives the roughly hewn stake through Mr. Drink's heart, pinning the matter to his blood silk chest at the same time. Ah! <laughs> and that's my story, kitties. Mr. Drink was through drinking after that. In fact, he was through all the way. <laughs> but you're not through following this tale of mine. You will find in the Vault Keeper's Corner. Read it. It will tell you how to get back issues of this mag and other EC titles, including mine. Tales from the Crypt. See you next in the Haunted Fear.